Weather Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your Hurricane Idalia briefing here on this Wednesday, the 30th of August, uh, 1130. And this uh, is for Central North Carolina. The big change, and, and uh, I apologize uh, for not having these, uh, what has changed uh, info on our previous slides, but uh, we've brought that back. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, the change, leading off with the changes. So we have issued a tropical storm warning is now in effect for Sampson, Cumberland, Hoke, and Scotland counties due to the expectation of frequent gusts tonight in the low end of the tropical storm criteria, which um, as you know, is uh, 39 uh, miles per hour. So uh, is, the, is, the, is the wind speed that is. Uh, where tropical storm force uh, starts. All right, so frequent gusts of 40 miles per hour is basically what we're expecting there with that uh, in those counties. And then, of course, we adjusted our timelines uh, to show some near-term trends uh, now that it's day of. <clears throat> Let's just jump right into it and show you, uh, again, just where that tropical storm warning is in effect. Again, this is just, these are the counties that uh, our Raleigh office covers. So obviously the, the tropical storm warning uh, is extends further east of Sampson County and further south than these counties uh, shown here. Uh, I'll show that in the big picture in a moment. No changes to our current flood watch. Uh, we may tweak a few a few of the counties here. Uh, if anything, we, we, we might remove counties sort of in the more interior northwestern edge of this uh, watch here, as it looks like the, the worst of the rain is mainly going to be long and east of, of I-95. And then finally, this is a, uh, I've gotten some great feedback from folks. Um, so uh, and thanks uh, thanks Gene appreciate <laughs> appreciate that uh, comment there uh, yeah I'll definitely uh, have to have to get that yeah um, so anyway here's the timeline of um, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from uh, about this graphic a lot of folks are saying hey this is this is a helpful graphic and uh, you know we've kind of tightened up this here as uh, as we get closer to the event day one you know. Uh, so to speak, we're, we're able to to really hone in on on when the worst of it's going to be, and quite frankly, the worst of it's going to be during the nighttime hours tonight, into uh, the sort of the first few morning hours uh, after daybreak. Um, you know, basically from 10 p.m. through about 10 a.m. tomorrow is when we expect the worst of the weather. So about a 12-hour period where we'll have the strongest, uh, heaviest rain and the strongest winds, and again the worst of the weather from the central and southern I-95 corridor east and southward, okay? And I'll show that here in just a minute. But um, so anyway, hope this is, is helpful to you. Let me show some current uh, graphics here. This is uh, live data. So we're looking at uh, visible satellite imagery and, uh, and, and radar. And you can see some of those um, very, very leading edge light rain showers are moving across. Uh, South Carolina and, and Southeast North Carolina, and that will be the, the continue to be the case. One thing you'll notice is, is look how sort of lopsided it is. Here's the center, right? Roughly. Well, that, so just I'll just make this a big center since it's moving. It's hard to do that on a moving graphic. But look how lopsided it is. Everything is now kind of shifted on the west side with very little activity uh, on the on the southeast side. So the northwest side is where most of the actions contained in terms of rain bands and heavy winds. And that's not unusual. This is very typical. There's a, a, a frontal system draped out across the region and it's very typical for, you know, as a jet stream dips down and, and interacts with these systems that the northwest side uh, becomes the more dominant um, part of the storm. And, and as you might imagine, as, as the center of the storm sort of tracks along here, according to the hurricane centers, uh, uh, projection, so would these bands basically lift north and east. So you can kind of get a sense for where these heavy bands are going to end up uh, as we go through the next 12 to 24 hours, right? So uh, so anyway, let me uh, move out of there and go to, whoops, I didn't want to do that. This is, uh, again, live data. And what we have here are uh, the, the latest hourly uh, strongest wind gusts. So you could see, um, in, a, in conjunction with these bands, these heavy rain bands, is where you find the strongest winds. And, and that makes sense, right? These initial bands, these light rain showers up here, the winds aren't that strong, okay? It's uh, not no surprise. And then it just gradually gets stronger the closer you get to the center. You see a bunch of 
you know, 15 to 20, 25 mile per hour wind gusts. And then the strongest wind gusts, the, the 35 to 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts are, are, are closer. Uh, uh, but it's not unusual, uh, again, with time for this to expand. So uh, once again, if you, if you envision sort of the track of this storm heading off to the Northeast, this is the official track. Um, you know, this, these bands here will con continue to get their act together. Um, they already have their act together, but continue to lift off to the north and to the uh, east in conjunction with the track of the overall storm. So uh, so that's why we're, uh, again, and we have been highlighting for the last couple of days, areas from the central and southern I-95 corridor south and eastward uh, having the, the greatest impacts, okay? Uh, just real quick while we're here, um, you can uh, overlay the weather watches, warnings, and advisories for uh, for anyone that's interested. And the red are the tropical storm warnings. Okay, uh, I'll show you at the end uh, how to get to this. If you if you're not familiar, we'll save that for the uh, extra bonus materials. I like to say. All right. So anyway, here's a simulation that shows how we expect this to all play out. Let me get to the basically the current time, but roughly right here. Right. That this is a simulation, and, and it pretty closely matches what's going on. You know. Not unusual as we get, you know, within 12 to 24 hours of an event, our models lock on. And as we progress forward in time, keeping an eye on the on the timestamps at the top, on the left is a simulation of what the radar may look like. On the right is a simulation of sustained winds. And uh, so don't focus so much on the numbers, but focus just sort of on the color shades and know that the, the, the brighter the colors, uh, the deeper, closer to yellows and oranges, the, the stronger the winds will be, okay? So here we go. Um, as we move towards the late late afternoon hours, we get some of those initial rain bands moving across central North Carolina. As we head into the evening hours, it kind of spreads out. Pretty much all of central North Carolina is seeing some rain, even up towards the triad and up toward Roxboro and the Virginia border uh, getting in on some of the rain. But look where the heaviest rain is falling. Uh, closer again to the center and, and, and down across South Carolina, those heavy rain bands will begin to lift north into North Carolina by 10 o'clock this evening. And, uh, and, and and we could see there's a very, very sort of sharp cutoff uh, in, the, in the back edge of the head of the rain. Right there, you can kind of see. Isn't it funny how everything always tends to line up with the I-85? I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, <laughs> so it's almost like north of I-85, uh, it's going to be a lot drier, right? We see this all the time in the wintertime. I-85 I is a division line between different types of weather. Well, north of 85, it appears that there's just going to be a tremendous amount of dry air. So there's going to be sort of two cutoffs of where the heavy rain is. There's going to be one cutoff here closer to the, the more inner bands, right, where the heaviest rain will fall. And then there'll be sort of a, just a, 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 you know, a moderate amount of rain, but but, but lighter uh, in between, say between I-95 and say the, the 85 corridor. And then once you get north of the 85 corridor, uh, it's much, uh, much lighter. So anyway, follow along as I uh, continue to move this simulation uh, forward in time. And you can see uh, there's 10 p.m. Uh, there's uh, midnight, there is 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Uh, so you, you see my point that I made earlier, the, the 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 most impactful, the most hazardous and most impactful weather will occur during the night hours tonight, okay, into tomorrow morning. Let me call your attention on the right side. These are the wind speeds, okay? And, and again, as I mouse over, I'm mousing over, see the numbers jumping around the Latin lawn. Those are, that's just a mouse readout of the wind speed. So, you know, right now, like I'm um, looking at, say, Sampson County, 25, 26.5 miles per hour, right? That's sustained. So for gusts, you can add another 10 or 15 miles per hour on top of that when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, gusts. So so uh, so you know just just keep that in mind. Um, again, you know you know you might say, well, yeah, 25 miles per hour isn't a big deal, right? Well, that's true. You know, strong, but but when you add 10 to 15 miles on top of that in gusts, you're up around 35, 40. Now, is 35, 40 miles per hour going to knock down a heavy uh, a, a strong tree? No, but It'll knock down a weak tree, a dying tree, a rotting tree, and, and given the fact that the ground will be so soggy from all this rain-soaked, rain-soaked ground, it'll make it easier for those trees to fall over. So again, let me back up now. I'm, uh, I'm back to the beginning, and let me get to right now. And then uh, again, one, just focus your attention on the right side. And notice uh, here we are at 10, 10 11 o'clock. Notice as 
as the uh, heavier rain m moves up into uh, north, southeast North Carolina, so too do, do the winds. The winds are beginning to increase here. And, and, and basically what we uh, end up seeing is uh, that those winds, those pockets of wind associated with these bands uh, beginning to spread up across the southern I-95 corridor into southeast North Carolina, eventually into eastern North Carolina as we head toward daybreak. And again, so so we think the worst of the sort of wind will be confined, you know, across the southern tier, uh, basically, um, you know, from from uh, Scotland and Hope counties eastward. And that's why we extended the tropical, or that's why we uh, issued a tropical storm warning for those southern tier counties, because they're going to get into these heavier rain bands that will have those gusts uh, of frequent gusts of 40 miles per hour. So, uh, so anyway, that's how we're expecting that to play out. 6 a.m. tomorrow, pretty just a, a nasty commute from basically uh, I-95 East. Uh, you know, there could still be some moderate rain across the Triangle region. And, and, and for folks in, in the triad, you know, your rain's still going to occur, but it's just going to be much lighter and much less impactful. Okay, so then as we head uh, continue to head through the morning hours, you can see it's shifting uh, to the east. I'll just draw your attention real quick to these strong winds. I'm looking on the right side of this graphic, these strong winds over the northeast winds, I uh, might add, over the Pamlico Sound. That's going to create some storm surge issues for down East Carteret County and the in the lands adjacent to the Pamlico and 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 uh, and Noose Rivers there. So so uh, anyway, uh, there's going to be some surge issues there, um, just some water inundation. Uh, but again, that's uh, not unusual for this type of storm that stays offshore. Uh, anyway, by noon, um, you're pretty much dry from Raleigh West, and then as we get into uh, the, the late afternoon, uh, the storm is going to quickly exit out of central North Carolina. So we're talking the worst weather from about, you know, 8, 9, 10 o'clock tonight through about 6, 7, 8 in the morning. We're talking about a 12-hour period of pretty um, you know, blustery, gusty, heavy rain. Again, the worst of the conditions south and east of Raleigh. Just nasty weather uh, from, from late this evening through tomorrow morning, and then conditions rapidly improving. I bet you'll see some sunshine in the triad by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Um, and then as we head to uh, the overnight hours tomorrow night, by, by, by midnight tomorrow night, it's, it's all out of here. Okay. So how, what does this mean in terms of amounts and, and overall statistics, so to speak? Uh, here's a rainfall graphic that you can see. And again, this correlates well with those simulations I just showed you a swath of, of four, five, six, six inches of rain from, from basically along and east of I-95 uh, and south of Highway 64. Um, as you, uh, there's a sharp cutoff. I mentioned that sharp cutoff to the, to, the, to the west due to that dry air, okay? So once you get, say, triad west, um, very, very little rain, light rain. Uh, when you get basically, say, you know, here's roughly the US-1 corridor, uh, you, when you get, you know, west of US-1, yeah, there's going to be, you know, an inch, maybe an inch and a half of rain with the heaviest rain from the central and southern I-95 corridor eastward, okay? Again, all in conjunction with the track of the storm and, and the simulations that I just showed you. All right, let me, let me, let me erase all this, and uh, we'll go to our next slide. Oh, by the way, I want to point out that focusing on these rainfall amounts, well, you know what the impact's going to be, right? It's going to be flash flooding. Um, so, so the areas in red depict the areas with the greatest risk for flash flooding. The areas in yellow depict the areas that could see some flash flooding. Um, and, and the areas in green depict the areas that you can't roll it out, but it's much less likely to see flash flooding. So green areas can't be rolled out, less likely. Yellow areas, you're probably going to see some uh, local instances of flash flooding. Red areas, there's going to be many frequent, numerous instances of flash flooding. Again, please remind your folks, uh, if for folks watching us on YouTube after the fact, just never drive through areas. I, I know I say this all the time. It sounds like a broken record. Never drive through areas where water covers the road. Just turn around, don't drown. But folks uh, listening now, just remind your, your constituents or partners, friends, family, just to avoid flooded areas. Don't go into it, okay? All right, how much uh, wind? What's the worst? Again, this is just sort of a, a, a rough summary of what, what type of wind speeds we're expecting. Again, just reiterating uh, why we've uh, issued a tropical storm warning for Scotland, Hoke, uh, Cumberland, and, and Sampson counties and points east of that and south. We're already in it. Um, you can see wind, frequent wind gusts uh, uh, at or above 40 expected. Uh, again, uh, central and southern I-95 corridor east and southward. This graphic shows the risk 
the areas that have the best risk for tornadoes. So if you're along the immediate coast, Wilmington up to Cape Lookout, um, and, and basically that first tier of counties uh, along the coast will have the greatest risk for tornadoes and the tornado risk will lessen as you go further west. So, uh, so I just wanted to, to bring that to your attention. This is again, the, the tornado risk areas. All right, what else do we got here? Okay, so well, I just showed you all that rain, right? In this graphic right here, that's a lot of rain. And, and that's gotta go somewhere, right? Flash flooding initially, and then it's gonna find its way into the river system. So here are some river forecasts. Um, in central North Carolina, we're not expecting any river flooding, but uh, for our friends uh, to our south and east, yeah, you can see Lumber River, Lumberton uh, going up to moderate, forecast to go up to moderate flood stage, as is the case in the Northeast Cape Fear River. But uh, fortunately for for us in the in the you know in the in central North Carolina, again it looks like again most of the heaviest rain will fall in the river basins, mainly to our south and east. Okay, the the Noose River should be okay. Obviously, you know uh, the Noose River widens and, and empties out. Now now again there could be an issue with storm surge backing up. So if you you know live you know uh, uh, closer to the coast, there obviously there's issues. But um, but but for us here in central North Carolina. Our main mode of flooding will be more in the way of flash flooding and not so much river flooding. Okay. All right. So I think I pretty much addressed all the other um, uh, issues here. Uh, if you want to get to these slides, if you go to weather.gov slash Raleigh, you could just type in Raleigh here or RAH. Uh, that'll take you to our webpage. Our briefing slides are right here. You can download them. Um, I will be updating this here as soon as this call ends. That map I showed you, this. This, no, not that map, I think I closed it already. The map with the current observations, uh, you can find that under current conditions. And if you scroll down to observations, map in parentheses, um, you know, this is, this is a great mapping system. Uh, you can zoom out, you can, you know, turn on hazards. If you wanna look and see what areas have watches, warnings and advisories, you could turn that off. You could turn on radar, that'll give you live radar. If you wanna tweak these, uh, these little dots represent current conditions, you can go under observations and change that. Uh, I like to always look at what are the current wind gusts, so you can drop that down and click wind gusts, and you can see what the what the current wind gust values are. Kind of get a sense for what's headed our way, right? So, um, so anyway, sometimes it takes a while to load, and if you zoom in, you'll get a greater density, or you could click uh, the the density right there. All right. So, uh, what else am I missing here? Um, we talked about the uh, the wind. We talked about the heavy rain and the flash flood potential. We talked about the tornado threat. Uh, we talked about the subsequent river um, issues. I will point out, um, after this system exits, we're going to have some really nice weather. I'm just going to click on a few locations. Look at look at Winston-Salem. Uh, Friday, sunny, high 77. Saturday, sunny, high 79. I mean, it, it, does it get any better than that in late August? Um, and then Raleigh, the Triangle region, I'm just clicking on our climate sites. Um, here's our flat, uh, flood watch, and then sunny in 80, sunny in 82, sunny in 87. You, you can't buy uh, better weather than that for, for a holiday weekend. Um, Fayetteville, um, just for our friends to the south, um, you know, same situation. Once we get past this storm, we have some spectacular uh, weather for the weekend. I will point out, if we have any folks heading to the beach for Labor Day holiday, rip currents are, 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 are uh, there's a lot of them. And it's very, very dangerous situation right now at the beach. My advice is don't go in the water uh, because there's a good chance if you do, you're gonna get caught up in a rip current, okay? So if you are heading to the beach this weekend for the holiday weekend, or if you know anybody that's heading to the beach, just tell them, you know, the best way to stay safe is stay out of the water. You can enjoy the beach, enjoy the sand, and enjoy all the other activities at the coast, but uh, going into the ocean and swimming is not a good idea because there's a lot of wave energy around. That wave energy is gonna persist. And the risk for rip currents, while high now, will continue to be high right through the weekend. So, uh, so that's the briefing for 11:30 on this Wednesday.